Um, David Barry reporting for Jewish Online Magazine. Um, our special guest today um, is Juliet uh, Lounder Pope, and uh, she is a professional declutterist and a coach. Um, thank you for joining Jewish Online Magazine, Juliet. Thank you. Uh, Juliet, can I begin by asking you? Is there something in the expression, a cluttered home, a cluttered life? Absolutely, and um, I'm sure many of my clients um, from all sorts of different backgrounds would, um, would agree with that. Um, the issue is that clutter is very difficult to define, though, and I do think it's a very personal matter that um, what some people would regard as a really cluttered home other people would see as being fairly minimal and um, that's why I as a declutterer I say I, I don't actually have an opinion on what anybody's home should look like I think it's a very personal and subjective matter sometimes I walk into people's homes and you know there's just two or three books on a table and they feel uncomfortable because there's too much and other times there are books floor to ceiling and I think oh is this what we're going to deal with but actually that's not the problem it's the kitchen that needs sorting so um, I think I think they do go hand in hand, but it's a very personal um, definition. Um, thank you for that answer, Juliet. Um, you're a professional declutterer and a life coach. Mm -hmm. Is there a relationship between those two professions? Um, there is in the way that I work, because I trained first of all as a coach. Um, my background's actually in academia. I was a university teacher for many years and because I was interested in motivating people and I was really fascinated in how people overcome um, procrastination and what gets in the way of people learning so that's why I trained as a coach and then while I was doing my coaching training I realized that I could actually apply it to decluttering which is something I've always done as a hobby and for friends and so on so the way I work as a declutterer is to coach people through the process um, there are lots of different ways of decluttering and in fact um, I belong to a national association of professional declutterers and organisers. There are about 100 of us in the UK, about 30 of us in London I think. Um, I think there's only about three or four in North West London but we're a very very mixed bunch and some people have more of a design background, some people are more interested in um, um, sort of dealing with mental health issues or dealing with design and I bring my coaching to the decluttering because I think it's really important to work with people and to coach them through decisions rather than tell them what to do so they sort of go hand in hand in that respect. Mm. When do people decide that they want to declutter? Oh gosh that's an interesting question. Um, the people I work with tend to fall into a number of different categories um, the most obvious ones are when they're facing some big change in life. So it could be moving house. Um, it could be moving house at a particularly difficult time. I mean, moving house is always stressful. Mm. It's one of the most stressful events that anybody can go through. Mm. But it's all the more difficult if you are downsizing from a large home to a smaller one. It's very difficult if you are um, maybe find yourself on your own because you've been widowed or divorced or separated. There's a lot of stress in your life and so moving house is an additional difficulty or challenge and so that's the kind of situation. Um, but I also work with people in happier circumstances. Sometimes um, a couple who are expecting a baby and need to make space in their home because they literally haven't got any room to put the baby. Um, sometimes people who are um, expecting visitors, quite often a mother or mother-in-law, or for um, sometimes couples where um, I quite often work with men where they're um, you know expecting perhaps the girlfriend or the girlfriend's mother is going to come around and visit for the first time and they want the place to look nice mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit more than it's not just cleaning it's actually decluttering and clearing space and what are the issues what are the issues that people face when they are confronted with decluttering and how are you able to help them? Mm. I would say generally, although every single case is different, every client is different and every home is different, um, but one of the most general issues I face 
is making decisions. I see, I see clutter actually as a symptom of indecision and I think that it, there's so many different decisions involved whether it's what to keep. Can you give us some examples yes, of, yeah. of, of what decisions people yeah. have to confront with? Yeah, so um, the first set are things like what to keep and yes. what not to keep. And um, then there's a decision if you decide that you don't actually need something anymore. You might have clothes you've outgrown or books you don't use, textbooks that you don't and need what, anymore. But why would people decide to perhaps keep things that perhaps necessarily they perhaps shouldn't? Oh, all sorts of reasons. Um, one of them is the decision about what to do with them. You mm -hmm. might have decided that actually you're never going to wear those clothes again. I mean, I work with, for example, women who have maternity clothes and they're not going to use them again, but they don't necessarily want to just give them to put them on a skip. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they might want to give them to a particular charity or they might, people hold on to things because they think they might be useful in future. Mm -hmm. And even things sentimental that, reasons as well. And sentimental reasons, um, things that people have given you, mm. things that you've collected on travels and holidays and souvenirs. Um, but you haven't got room for them anymore. So what we're going to yes. do, uh, Julia, yeah. we haven't got room for it, for these possessions anymore. So what we're going to do? How are you going to tackle these problems? Right. Um, one one of the reasons I think my approach works well is that. I try and find purposeful ways of parting oh. from things. I never ever talk about throwing things out or giving things away or sometimes people joke and they say to me, oh, why don't you just hire a skip and throw it all on the skip? Mm -hmm. I think that's actually quite disrespectful to the people who've acquired the belongings. It's disrespectful to the things that people have given you and so on. And I think one of the reasons why people hold on to stuff is because they want to part from it in a way that has becomes meaningful with so, respect yes and with respect mm. so it might be giving it to a charity for some people taking things to a charity shop is fine other people don't want their personal mm. goods on display mm. especially for example someone who's been widowed mm. and has clothes belonging to their former mm. uh, for, you know to, to mm. someone that has been very close to them they don't mm. necessarily want them going to a charity shop so i will find either a gemach or a individual or a charity or a a cause that will put to very good use anything that anybody wants to give away. Um, for example, um, men's clothes that are in reasonable condition could go to a charity to help refugees and asylum seekers. So somebody who's going to apply for their first job but can't necessarily afford to buy a formal suit um, could actually have that opportunity and, and that's an example. Um, children's clothes and toys can go to and, 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 and I think that perhaps if people realise yeah. that their positions are going to go to a good yes. cause, this perhaps makes it easier for them to let go. Absolutely. And they know that not only are they doing a mitzvah by helping somebody else, but actually it's also honouring the memory sometimes of the person that gave them something. Um, but even with less emotional situations, you know, people who have... Um, whose children are growing up and they may have books or clothes or toys or things they no longer need, um, if they know that it's someone else is actually going to make good use of it, um, or sometimes it's also a case of people wanting to sell things. They may have things that are valuable um, and they may want to sell them, but they may not know how to put them on eBay or may not want to use eBay. They may prefer another, another way of selling. So I will help people, whether it's giving it to charity, whether it's selling things, um, or whether it's giving it directly to um, somebody that will really... It, it feels good. Everyone I've worked with always says, you know, actually giving things away makes you feel better than acquiring things. And um, it's, it's, it's the hardest thing making that first phone call to you? So, um, I don't know. Realising well, that they've got a problem yes, with clutter yes. and, you know, making that first phone call to you, Juliet. Yes. That's, uh, that, that means that they're confronting the challenges and issues. Yes, it can be. It can be. And that's why I offer a free telephone consultation. Oh, okay. Anybody who wants is willing to ring me and I'll chat to them on the phone. Oh. Um, if they're local, I will um, offer to pop round and see, um, see what situation they're in. Yeah. Um, I think it's very, it is a very big decision to invite a stranger into your house and to deal with the problem. On the other hand, people often say to me, um, I'd much rather you do this with me than, you know, my 
wife, my sister, my yes. friends, what people have often asked me. Sometimes it's, yeah, it's, it's an outsider that's yes. getting involved, it's easier, isn't yes. it? Yes. I mean, I've worked with someone recently who um, said to me, I've tried to do this with my grown-up children and they end up shouting at me mm. because they get impatient. And actually my approach is very much to, to guide people. I can be quite directive in what I think... Not, not, in, not in terms of telling them what to do. I don't have an opinion. You see, that's the beautiful thing. I don't have an opinion on what they should keep or shouldn't keep. I just want to coach people to the point where they can make a decision about how much space do you actually want in your wardrobe? What do you actually want to see on your mantelpiece? Do you want your books, you know, sort of double parked so you can't find anything? What space do you want in your home? What do you want to use? Do you want a dining room table? that you have to clear every Shabbat because it's piled full of books and papers and everything? Um, or do you want a space where you can invite people spontaneously and know that you've got room to eat? So it's really about making lots of decisions like that. And I can be quite, um, I can help people sort of structure. Yeah, listen, no, I, 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 I think from our own personal circumstance, we, we recently had to make some painful decisions about getting rid of some of the kids' toys because mm. they're growing up. Yes. And, um, my wife and I had disagreements, and I think but having you in our house, you know, <laughs> making those decisions for us, or helping us yes, come yes. to a decision would have been a yes. lot easier. In your case, with the children's toys, what's really important is, what is it that you really value? Is mm. it, you know, the fact that your kids are growing up, the fact that you have a few souvenirs? It's not the things that matter, it's the relationships that matter. Mm. And if you value the relationship and you can build the relationship and nurture that, Maybe it's more important to have space in your home so that you can entertain children, grandchildren, friends and so on than have a cluttered home full of mementos. Um, and it's really that, that's, you know, it's important to think about um, how, how, what you value and how you value it. I think having spoken to you for the last 10 or 15 minutes, uh, Juliet, uh, I've definitely come to the conclusion that you being a professional declutterer and a life coach, those are definitely connected. And mm. I think, I think um, perhaps when people see this video and uh, are attracted to maybe get in contact with you, I think having those two particular um, skills mm. and expertise uh, will make life a lot easier. Mm, I hope so. Thank you. I'm... Um... I give a lot of talks and I'm also running workshops. Um, I've just finished a series of workshops in Finchley um, because I do recognise that not everybody is ready to have that personal conversation or to invite me around to their home. I did work with someone um, a little while ago who hadn't invited anyone into her home for six years. Mm. I was the first visitor because she didn't feel comfortable. Mm. In fact, there's an expression, um, have, I don't know if you've heard the term chaos, which is can't have anybody over for supper. Because <laughs> um, you're living in chaos. Um, but anyway, I've started running workshops where people can come um, for an evening. I'm going to start some daytime sessions in September um, as a group. And it's not so much of a support group as an opportunity to perhaps just share some ideas, talk about the, the problems and the strategies, and be accountable as we set and work as well. Great idea. Yeah. And then if people want to hire me, you know, as an individual, then I'm, I'm happy to do that. But I think there is a need sometimes for people to get that help within a group. And um, if viewers of this video, Juliet, want to find out some more information about mm -hmm. these workshops, um, do you have a website? Um, yes, I do. And I'm hoping to update it um, as often as possible. It's www.jlpcoach.com. Mm. Um, finally, Juliet, um, is there a message you'd like to um, pass on to our viewers about decluttering? Um, just that whenever you're ready, if you'd like to talk about clutter, do get in touch. And something I'd like to stress is that I do maintain strict confidentiality. Um, I never reveal to anybody who I'm working with. And obviously because I'm going into people's homes and seeing... Um, privy to lots of, of, of personal um, confidences, um, I will never reveal anything about anybody's home or let alone the, people, the identity of the people I'm working with. And I think especially because I'm working in a community where people know each other, that's quite important. So um, I'd just like to... No, I, I, I think that's a very important message mm. to get across. Yeah. Um, 
Juliet, uh, it's been a really, really fascinating um, chat with you. Um, I certainly will be asking you to come round to our house <laughs> and declutter our lives. <laughs> but uh, uh, Juliet, Zelanda Pope, um, professional declutterist in the Life Coach, thank you for joining uh, Jewish Online Magazine. Thank you, and I wish you all the best with the new website too. Thank you very thank much, you. thanks. Mm -hmm.